there's no uh, doubt there'll be a safety car here. Yokohama Replay tells the story. There's a tap from Gary Carson on Rick Gill and Nandy Kiss. That was more than a kiss. That was a pretty big hit. Yeah, there it there is. There we go. Oh, Luke May gets into the side there of the Renko entry of Lever. And watch, May is able to skip away. So is Wilson. And here's where it gets ugly. Well, Lever's just left out in no man's Well, they got nowhere to go. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of damage. You know, Rob, Her uh, Rob Jarvis in the... In the Side. Gary Baxter running third, race side bottom, a great start, just his second round in the series. Look at Kim Jane, he's got a lot of work to do there. And this is Ute country, certainly if you uh, you want to own a Ute and you're going to come to the races, you'd live here in Darwin. It's Oh uh, no, there yeah, goes Kim Jane! Oh, that's nasty. Matt Kingsley's involved there as well. See what happened. That was not. Now, here's another little incident on the subject of on-track problems. Grant Denyer, there he is in the white ute competing last night. That is a major shunt. And uh, we're pretty lucky that Grant is on deck and well enough to participate today in the pit lane reporting. Now, he hits the back of that car, but really only as a life-saving exercise. He had no control over what was going on at that stage because his brakes were gone. Grant, you can fill us in on exactly what happened. Max Jr. So we've got Charlie Senior, who's handball the Wilson Security Commodore. Oh, oh. Look in the background. That's Tim Shaw. No, not the Demtel man. And the that, former that car, Cup that, driver that, head. That is That's a massive big. hit. That's big. That's a huge hit. The car he's sharing with Reese McNally, the younger brother of former Rookie of the Year, Glenn Kane. But with no steering, it's just gone head on into the fence. I've got no doubt he's probably... It's, it's hard to tell when something like that happens, you know, in the, whether the steering is broken or not. You have a feel of the car. No, it feels OK. On the gas pedal again, and all of a sudden it just does not steer, and this place is so unforgiving. And then it's already been in action today. Ooh. That's not the action we wanted. Brad Patton's car, he and Craig Donis got together. Patton's out for the weekend, and Donis has been put to the rear of the grid. Oh, that's a sudden stop, isn't it? That's that same location where Paul Radisic went. Close there to the tyre bundle. Bit of a touch between Rob Jarvis and Gary McDonald. I think we got everyone through. So far, oh, it's got to be someone turned around here. Oh, oh, a glass. Oh, oh amazing! That, that was wicked. One. Ben Cavix was in that. <laughs> Kim Jane as well. Gary McDonald nowhere to go. Look at Brad Bean. Oh, he's got a bump from behind. He's hit Ben Dunn. Brad Payne had a defense and Cavic had nowhere to go there. This chain reaction. There's Patton around the outside who ends up in the fence. Oh no. Massive carnage. Darby. The orange grow fruit juices, four wheels and on the dirt. And oh, big dirt around. Oh, in fact, that's Ian Luff. Oh, like a demolition Darby. The orange grow fruit juices, four wheels and on the dirt. And oh, big dirt around. Oh, in fact, that's Ian Luff. You can see them wash wide a little bit. So this is Alan Ledger. And he's decided to stay away from that car with all the dirt uh, and dust. Uh. Oh. Oh. In being the innocent victim in the other accident, he's paid the ultimate price. Even the wiper blades are bent. Look at this. Now, oh, just catches the back of the kerb. And with that continual mass moving, it ends up being, what's that, six rolls. So by turning left, the car's going straight here, but he tries to turn, and by putting it on its side, it barrel rolls it off the other side of the chase. Yeah, the wheel's just catching the back side of the kerb, and that's the end result there. If he had gone straight on, he probably would have... Lion Energy drinks forward is right in the mix here, but at the end of lap one, Cranbrook leads the way from George Medici. Gary McDonald, the race two winner, sitting there in third spot from Ryle Harris. Matt Kingsley's next through, but he's arguing over oh. the chicane, and Craig Doctors oh. is in the wall. That is nasty. That's a nasty crash. Unfortunately, two cars going through turn one never really works out, but um, Hutchin, the cars have got unsettled over the curb. That was Jack L's good. That is simply a case. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, poor Jack Elsgood had nowhere to go. The front two were having their own little race, and unfortunately it's got all wrong, and they've blocked the track for him, but um, that's racing as it's known. It, it almost looked like that. Look, that's nasty. Kingsley's car fired across the road. But the contact with Dontis originally in the chicane, Dontis's car was 
basically in the air when they collided. Yeah, that already's in race two earlier today for cutting the track. So they need to adhere to the limits here because they have so much to lose in terms of points and positions to this championship. Could see this. He cut through again. He That's twice. That oh, oh that massive. In the wall. massive crash. Adam Mardrum is in the Auto 1 car. He's ploughed into the back of David Cedars, who gets hit by Gary Baxter. Chris Walton's involved. Absolute. Another angle. He rejoins alongside Wayne Wakefield. Oh, and that's a just massive. stops. Marjoram, nowhere to go. At, that's Wayne Wakefield. And Wayne Wakefield did squeeze, even though... Cedars was coming back on the Cedars road. was coming back on the road, he was on the outside. He should have yielded oh. to Wakefield. Oh, that's oh. huge. You don't like seeing anything like that. That is nasty stuff. And the fields compressed on the first lap. They all had just nowhere to go. Look at the sh just junk and glass and bits of car. That's super slow-mo. Sensational to look at, but uh, these incidents...